Jeff, AI-generated traffic is creating some entirely new demands. Why aren't existing networks fit for purpose? Well, AI is the most massive uh, new technology we've ever seen. And just like in the past, where we've seen new technologies take over and, and change uh, the entire industry, and we've seen new companies uh, grow while old companies uh, failed, uh, we're going to see that with AI going forward multiple times faster. AI is a challenge for every company in every industry, period. Now you've got older companies who have older networks, or if you think you look at it in the in the telecom industry and in the wireless industry, you know if if you remember when we moved from analog to digital, that was back in the in the nineties. Uh, and that was a challenge for all of these companies, but they made it. AI is even a bigger challenge, and it's even more immediate. And frankly, we don't even know what the demands are going to be a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now. AI has been growing so rapidly that it's, a, it's the biggest challenge any executive team in any company in any industry has ever, ever seen. Jeff, what's your advice for the service providers? The service provider industry has a unique challenge. It's an industry that has been around for 50, 100, 150 years, and it has evolved time and time again. This is the next big evolution. There's a lot of technology that's not going to be compatible with AI, so th this all has to be updated. They have the biggest challenge in front of them, and the question is, some of them are going to meet it, but every one of them is going to struggle with it. And we really don't know how quickly everything is going to change, but everything is going to change. So let's just hope that we have the right leadership at all of these companies so they steer us down the right path. I have a question about the context of AI in North America. Um, you know, the government has sort of uh, abdicated its responsibility for developing AI to big tech. Uh, and big tech has come back and said, yes, we, we'd like to do that, but we don't really like any... Uh, regulations, rules and regulations. So we want to be able to, uh, to, uh, to do what we want, but they want to be free. They want to have a party, right? Um, and, and I'm not sure that that's a terribly good idea. What do you think? Well, I am on both sides of that coin. On one hand, I say AI is going to unleash powers and forces that are going to be so good for our world. On the other hand, it's going to unleash all sorts of problems that we have to wrestle with at the same time. So we, you, you, you have to take a hands-off approach if you want this to grow and expand, especially when you're in competition with other countries like China. They're not holding back at all. So we can't hold back at all. But we have to do this responsibly. So if the government is going to be running it, it's going to be too slow. Newt Gingrich, he had this, this, this saying that the regular clock works at light speed and the government clock works at half speed. And, the, and you can't move ahead at half speed with AI. You've got to move ahead as fast as you can. And that, that's so we can win this race. But, and again, there's always that but, we have to make sure we stay within the boundaries because there's, a, or there's an opportunity and there's a risk. And they're, we're operating at the same time. Yeah, I think the balance is yet to be struck. I, I would like to see uh, more uh, regulation, but not coming from select committees in Washington. For example, uh, you mentioned China. They are forging ahead with this, which is easy to do if you can just tell the whole country what to do. At the same time, China isn't using unregulated AI uh, for sensor monitoring in live nuclear power stations, which the U.S. is which is a spectacularly awful idea, but there is no regulations in the U.S. to stop it. So again, I guess I have to take my own advice. I have to be comfortable with ambiguity for a bit until we get to the bottom of it. And the question is for how long? And I have a feeling that for the rest of our lives, we're going to be asking these same questions and wrestling with these same issues until at some point we reach a parity. When that will be and what that will look like, I have no idea. It's the thing is, it's not stoppable. This is unstoppable, and it's it's a great opportunity for mankind. But 
You've got to make sure the other side is also protected. 